Hey guys, I'm starting today's Q&A with a pre-submitted question. The question is, I've been a chronic migrainer for the past 25 years. The only thing that alleviates it a little bit, about 50%, uh, is very deep ketosis. I eat 10 carbs a day, uh, but I don't understand why. I think if I could figure out what's wrong with me, I would be able to avoid migraines completely. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Um, so I really have no idea what could be causing your migraines. It could be so, so, so many things, um, like <laughs> the environment, mineral deficiency, uh, hormone imbalance, um, but we have to remember that ketosis is not going to heal really anything. It's going to actually make, it can make a lot of things worse. Um, it puts us into a stress state, so fight or flight state, because we have to manufacture our own blood sugar. And so when we do that, it just pushes us further and further into this fight or flight state. Um, it can make us feel better because cortisol and stress hormones numb us and they do make us feel. It can make us feel more focused. It can make us feel better. It can make digestion issues go away because we're simply not eating the things that might be actually festering underneath. Um, so it kind of like hides things as allows you know, issues to sort of manifest. Remember that we're not being able to detoxify well when we're under ketosis or even fasting. Um, we're not converting thyroid hormone. Um, our digestion pretty much slows down a lot, um, if at all, you know, stops. Um, so there's a bunch of things going on that kind of slow down in the background and that's why we can feel better. But um, ketosis is just going to hide those things. So really, what you're seeing when you're not in ketosis is probably the true state of the body. Um, and the issue with ketosis is that, you know, you're probably depleted in a bunch of minerals that your body needs. So the more, the longer you are in ketosis, you're depleting, depleting, depleting. And you know, this state can last and it can go on for years, uh, you know, until your body truly becomes so depleted. Um, remember my post about the three phases of stress, it just goes into the exhaustion phase. Um, the resistance phase can last for decades, so it's really until that phase that you, you realize, oh crap, like I'm actually, um, this is not working for me. Um, so I would need to know more about you to really understand what could be causing the migraines. If it's been 25 years, it's a very long time, I'd want to know, you know, about your childhood, <laughs> about any kind of trauma that you've experienced. Um, but that's what I have to say is the the feelings that you feel when you're not in ketosis are probably the true state of the body. So hiding it with ketosis is just letting it manifest. And I would really think about your approach and probably try to get down to the root of it um, through trial and error. I had one more pre-submitted question. Um, the question is, I know we need to avoid PUFAs. However, is it okay to get massages with organic castor oil? I use this instead and avoid toxic containing massage lotions, wondering if castor oil is PUFA. Um, so castor oil is actually a MUFA, so monounsaturated fat. So uh, another equivalent would be like avocado oil or olive oil. Um, these are definitely more stable than PUFA. And um, you know, I would say that they're definitely a better, uh, castor oil is definitely a better option than the um, you know pretty toxic um, uh, massage lotions that they use. So I would say go for it. Uh, just make sure it's in a glass bottle versus a plastic bottle. And uh, yeah, have at it. Is taking high quality DHA, EPA considered PUFAs? Do you take any fats as a supplement? Um, so yes, uh, DHA and EPA are considered PUFAs. Um, they're very, very unstable. And the, and the idea of you know, the essentialness of these fatty acids was established before vitamin B had been, uh, the B vitamins had been discovered. So essential fatty acid deficiency is actually a B6 deficiency. These fats are very estrogenic. Uh, they cause uh, suppression of the immune system. So I really don't like them. I don't think they're a health food as they are promoted. Um, and no, I don't take any fats as supplements. I get my fats from my food. I don't try to eat extra fat um, because usually um, the meat that I'm eating has plenty of it. So um, that's really where I stand stand on taking fats as supplements, you know, aside from cooking and some fat here and there. So hope that helps. Prenatal supplement suggestions, please. Um, so I've talked about this a couple of times. I don't like prenatals. Check out my post, my thoughts on multivitamins and prenatals. Um, these usually have, you know, they're, they're definitely synthetic vitamins. 
that's the first issue. They have vitamins that we shouldn't be supplementing, like vitamin D and calcium and synthetic vitamin A. Those are really, really gross and bad, um, and iron as well. Um, so that really wreaks havoc and creates imbalance, and the imbalance is also perpetuated by the fact that even the ones that are in there that are you know kind of okay to take, they're in really bad ratios. So I really don't like them. I'm a food first lady. May I ask if you can expand more on iron and estrogen detoxification, please? Um, so yeah, iron and estrogen have a really synergistic relationship. Uh, high estrogen levels will increase our absorption of iron by almost 10 times. Um, and you know, if estrogen is high, iron is gonna be high. It's, it's gonna really exacerbate any iron overload problems that we already may have. So the best way to go about this, if you do think you have something like this going on is um, you really need to support the metabolism. That is really going to be the number one way to um, rebalance things and get things back into where they need to be. So what does that look like? Making sure you're getting a really mineral rich diet, eating at a food frequency that makes sense for you, that works for you, um, eating well-balanced meals with good ratios of protein, carbs, and fat. That's going to be different for everyone too. Making sure you're getting your period. Uh, iron uh, Periods are how we detoxify iron naturally as women. Um, and if you're a male, you know, making sure you're giving blood every quarter. So these are just a couple ways, but can also be more complex than that. So uh, hopefully that helps you get started. So this is gonna be different for everyone because it really depends on where their health is at and what works for the person. Um, it could be no meat per day and you're just focusing on other bioavailable protein sources, or it could be a couple times a day. It's really dependent. That said, I think it's very beneficial to get red meat in at least once per day. What really made the biggest difference for me was changing my lifestyle and nutrition in a way that would support my health. And that looks very different for everyone. So, you know, health also looks different for different people. I, I can't say exactly what that's gonna, gonna look like for you. Um, but, you know, asthma is, the reason that steroid inhalers work is because it's like a corticosteroid. So it's cor similar to cortisol in that it suppresses things it's anti-inflammatory, so when you're not using it, you got you gotta have to like wonder what is causing your inflammation. Where is the source coming from? It could be what you're eating, it could be gut issues, it could be your environment, which is in a sense, you know, all encompassing. But I'm talking about you know, the air you breathe, the cleaning products you use, the personal care products you use. Um, you know, it's also got to do with trauma. Childhood trauma is a huge one. Um, also, how are you breathing during the are you breathing with your mouth open? Are you sleeping with your mouth open? These all can affect asthma. So, you know, it's it's trying to figure out exactly what your triggers might be. This is Again, this is gonna look different for everyone, but I hope this has helped, you know, give you some ideas. Lots of pimples from stress, normal, or does that mean an imbalance, an unbalanced imbalance in body? Um, so yeah, this is common, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's normal or something you should, you know, wave off. The skin often shows the health of the internal body. So um, if you say you're stressed, you know, what could be happening is your estrogen levels are higher than usual because when you're stressed, your liver can't, can't detoxify estrogen. And so we have recirculating estrogen in the body and this can get aromatized back into testosterone, which can drive acne. So really the root cause of it is your stress probably. Um, so really focusing on supporting your body through this stressful time. What are you eating to support your body? How frequently are you eating to support your body? What else are you doing? You know, what other changes have you made in your daily routine that will help you deal with the stress? Those are the things those are the things you should be thinking about because symptoms are the stage right before disease. So there's really it can go from one it can do a 180 really fast. Um, so I would get this kind of, you know, in check. Why would taking T3 make me itch? Um, so this could be a sign that the body's not quite ready for T3. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'd be wondering why you're prescribed T3, the whole history there, I'd wanna know, um, because if the foundations aren't in place, if you don't have the foundations in place to support something like T3, a T3 medication that's going to increase the metabolism, it's just gonna slow everything down and make everything worse if you don't have this ready. So, um, you know, I would kind of, 
take a step back and I'm not saying that you should stop taking your medication and maybe it's a conversation you need to have with your doctor but um, you know look at my post today you know you need good liver function you need good blood sugar balance to convert T P4 to T3 if your liver is not in a good place if you're not if your food frequency if your food in general is not in a good place if your lifestyle is not in a good place you're not going to be able to support this increase in metabolism so those are things you should think about as well is it better to eat potatoes with or without the skin so it depends on you as a person and where your health is at because they can be really irritating to the gut they do contain um, you know natural biological um, pesticides just like most plants and vegetables um, so it really depends on where your health is at if you have no digestion problems whatsoever then yeah go for it but if you're suffering with digestion right now um, maybe avoid them do you know anything about the carrot salad benefits so the carrot salad that this person is referring to is the rapey carrot salad it's like one grated medium carrot one teaspoon or tablespoon of melted coconut oil a splash of vinegar and uh, some salt I think this is it um, and yes it does have benefits it's really good at removing endotoxins um, it's also really good at removing excess estrogen in the body uh, but you know there's people that don't have time to make that salad every single day uh, you can make it in bulk for the week if you want but I'm somebody that just has a carrot every day and I still experience a lot of benefit from it I would check out my post called carrots so UTIs are pretty much synonymous with bacterial overgrowth. Um, I would be wondering how fast did you go in with the carbs? What kinds of carbs did you implement? Uh, what did your diet look like before you implemented, car implemented carbohydrates? So I really need to know all of this information before you know I could give you a suggestion. Um, healing the metabolism and really figuring out what carbs work for you are going to be the most effective ways to deal with it. Unless I'm having a total brain fart right now, I believe quercetin has worked well for women um, and cranberry juice. So this could be a, some things that you could implement in the meantime. I find the whole fish oil thing very confusing. So are they bad for you? Um, don't worry, I found it very confusing too. Um, as I said before, you know, it's a misconception uh, that it's, you know, these oils and fatty acids are essential. I would just think about, you know, our ancestors a little bit here and you know there's a time and a place to do that but here I would for sure and think about would they ever take you know a capsule of oil or like a concentrated form of some kind of of some kind of oil like that um, no probably not so you know I would also think about the way that mother nature makes things uh, in breast milk there is no DHA why because it's probably harmful to the child there's also no iron in breast milk and there's also no vitamin D in breast milk. And so when we think about how things appear in nature, which are how we're meant to be consuming them, you know, it's, it's kind of a sign. Um, so I, to answer your question, I do think they're unhealthy. They're polyunsaturated fats. They're going to act like estrogen in the body. They're going to perpetuate estrogen in the body. They're gonna perpetuate serotonin in the body, which is a stress hormone, not a happy hormone. They're gonna suppress the immune system. So I would check out my post titled PUFAs, Actually, it's called What Are Poofas? So check that post out, it's a great starting point. Significant hair shedding one month after blood donation. So this could be the blood donation, it could not be. It could just be, has your stress level increased over the past month? Um, but that said, if you do think it's because of the blood donation, this is a very, a very clear sign that you are not ready for the blood donation. It takes lots of preparation for the body to donate blood because the blo donating blood is actually a stress on the body and so it can take a really big hit when you do it if you're not really ready for it remember it's not just iron that's being detoxified it's a lot of really valuable minerals um, so depending on what state you're in you have to do some building up again and i probably would avoid donating blood for a long time in terms of working with clients we work for months together months before they can donate blood and you know sometimes they'll go rogue and do donate blood and guess what they feel like crap for two weeks and that's because they didn't listen to me so just a tip make sure that you're ready check your temperatures and pulses this is a great way to know as well if you're ready um, really make sure you're eating mineral rich nutrient dense foods for months before you try and go do this uh, how to deal with non-alcoholic fatty liver and high uric acids, any nutritional approach for these. So these are 
clear signs that there's metabolic dysfunction in the body. Um, there could be a lot going on. Really high uric acids are usually found in people with gout, so you really want to get these under control. Um, there could be also kidney issues with high levels of uric acid. So how I would approach it is number one, looking at what you're eating, and number two, how you're living your life. These two are going to be there. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's really true. You have to look at these. These are really important. There's no magic pill for this. Um, you really have to take a look at how you're living your life and what you're putting in your body. Um, that said, there are things that you can do. So I would check out my post titled, Where to Start, Stop. Um, those are things that you can easily you know, stop doing instead of adding in right away. Um, that should be easy, low-hanging fruit that you can start doing today. Um, I would also say a good thing to avoid is probably unsaturated fatty acids. So what are you cooking with? What supplements are you taking? These can really wreak havoc on the liver as well as uh, when combined with iron, they're like a deadly duo. So um, that and also balancing your blood sugar is going to be huge. Not putting so much stress on the liver to create fuel from your body's muscle tissues and fat tissues. So those are things I would focus on and start with. I'm on sertraline SSRI for chronic anxiety attacks. I want to quit this. Any nutritional approach for this. Um, so uh, balancing blood sugar is going to be your number one friend. The depth at which uh, imbalanced blood sugar can cause anxiety, people really don't realize. It plays a huge role in your mood and how you feel. Um, so I'd really start focusing on that. And definitely work with your doctor on tapering off tapering off your medication, if that's something that you want to do. Um, it's important to know, and I, you know, I'm not saying like get off, but I do like to inform people about what medications, certain medications can do in your body um, so they can make informed decisions. SSRIs are going to increase your stress, and this probably is why they work well for some people, is because stress can, stress hormones can um, be numbing, they can be, you know, allow us to focus better, um, they are anti- they're anti-inflammatory, so stress hormones can make us feel better, or give us a sense of feeling better while things are actually getting worse underneath. I would check out my post called Serotonin, the Stress Hormone. Um, but that said, you know, good for you in taking the first step to sort of, you know, trying to handle this on your own. Um, good luck. I wish you the best of luck because it's a really brave thing that you're doing. Thoughts on perioral dermatitis and how to get rid of it. Um, so this is tough. To deal with um, I'm sure because anything on your face is like it really sucks um, but as I mentioned before anything that kind of shows up on our skin gives us a snapshot of what's really going on inside it's kind of like our body trying to get our attention that hey something's not right um, so it could have many many things that are driving it the first two things that come to mind are your fat soluble vitamin intake so what kinds of fats are you getting um, are they are you getting enough vitamin A vitamin E vitamin K vitamin D especially vitamin A though That's huge for skin. Uh, I'd also be looking at your gut and how you know your it's it's able to process food Is your digestion okay because oftentimes gut issues really show up as problems on our skin um, liver issues as well the liver is part of the digestive system um, I'd also wonder if this has anything to do with hormonal fluctuations at all? Does this appear at any time of the month for you or after certain foods? So these are kind of things that I would use to kind of start tracking it. So something I might recommend is actually making a log for yourself and seeing when these flare-ups happen, if it's, you know, all the time or if it's only at a specific time of the month and after a certain kind of food. Um, so that can help you figure out at least when it could be happening, what could be causing it. And then from there, you can start to figure out how you're going to fix it. Are sunflower seeds okay to eat? Um, this is up to you, but I will tell you that sunflower seeds are PUFAs and they are very estrogenic. So, and also very irritating to the gut. So you can do you can do whatever you want with that information. Um, I'll tell you that I personally avoid them. Onset of hirsutism, 50 plus pound weight gain, all labs normal, doctors said just lose weight, feeling lost. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. I've definitely felt lost before too. And this is kind of where conventional medicine really fails us. Labs can look totally normal, but we feel like crap. And so 
you that's where you really have to listen to your intuition and how you're feeling um, if you don't feel like something's right then it's time to go get a second opinion oftentimes conventional medicine is not going to be able to treat anything until we are actually in the disease state so that's something to keep in mind too so good for you and you know questioning this um, I would say your intuition is right that something isn't right I would probably start with seeing where your temperatures and pulses are lying so I have a, a guide a free guide in the link in my bio that'll help you figure out exactly if your metabolism is running okay this will be a really good indicator for for what's going on inside because if our metabolism is low or even too high then um, something is is wrong and that's probably the driver of our symptoms so we have to figure this out there are also some tips in the guide that you can start with. So I would say that's probably a good place to start. Um, and you know, you can do some trial and error and then if things aren't feeling better, probably you know work with somebody that knows the space. It could be causing dizziness, fainting, vomiting, or on period. So this is not a good sign. Um, and honestly, you know, if it's very severe, I would go see a doctor right away. But um, it's, it's a sign that shows us that how we were living Nourishing ourselves up until that point was not supportive of what's happening because getting your period is actually very depleting. So, um, you know, I'd be looking at what was I doing over the past month? What was I doing over the past three months? And depending on that, taking the steps that I need to do to really support myself for my next period. And I might not see improvement for 90 days. So, you know, really do being consistent about it too. Confused about vitamin E to detox PUFA. Isn't it derived from sunflower oil? So this is a really great question. Um, you know, vitamin E is actually the antidote to PUFA. So many foods that contain PUFA would have normally had the vitamin E to balance it. But the way we do agriculture today is totally different than how we would have done it and how it was. So we don't provide the, the cattle or, you know, the plants or the vegetables or fruits that we're growing and cultivating the natural things that they need to flourish or the natural things that you know they're they're supposed to be eating so this leads to an increase in an imbalance in PUFA content in the meat and in the plants and and polyunsaturated fats without vitamin E actually deplete us or even just high levels of polyunsaturated fats still deplete us it needs a lot of vitamin E to counteract that oxidation um, so this is kind of why vitamin E is so amazing it helps counteract the lipid peroxidation that's going on in the body. It's an antioxidant. Um, sunflower oil is not the only thing that has vitamin E. You can get it from red palm oil. I just wouldn't get it from soy uh, because soy is uh, goitrogen. And so goitrogens are something that works against the thyroid. Um, and uh, soy is also an obesogen. So it literally has been proven to make us fat. And it also messes with our brain. So that's not cool. Advice resources for hypothyroidism and PCOS. Yeah, so I would check out the book called uh, How to Hear Your Metabolism by Kate Deering. Um, the uh, Hypothyroidism, The Unsuspecting Illness by Broda Barnes. And The Period Repair Manual by Laura Bryden. Those are great books. Ion Biome, what do you think of it? Um, so I've never heard of this supplement, um, but if you can tell me exactly what's in it, I will tell you if I like it. So just DM me. During ovulation, I have a lot of egg white cervical mucus is too much concerning. Um, you know, we, we definitely have more when we ovulate. That's definitely, a, you know, part of the biology of ovulation. But if it's excessive, if it's excessive and it lasts a really long time, then there could be something else going on, like potentially a yeast infection um, or some other kind of bacterial overgrowth or bacterial issue. So, you know, I would probably, if it persists, if it smells funny, if it hurts, then that's when you go get checked out. Thoughts on unique E high gamma tocopherol mitolife not available now. Um, yeah, I think that's a fine option. Caveat: just make sure it's derived from sunflower oil or something else, just not soy. Tips for pancreatitis: um, Sorry to hear, pancreatitis really sucks. Uh, so I would definitely focus on lowering my polyunsaturated fat intake lowering my iron intake, maybe trying to get rid of some excess iron, rebalancing my minerals to make sure my pancreas has the ingredients or the, the kind of like building blocks that it needs to function well um, and balance my blood sugar. So those things I would definitely focus on and then go from there. Do you recommend nutritional yeast? Um, no, I do not. Most of it's fortified with synthetic B vitamins. 
these are not great. So it's a no-no for me. I'd focus on other B vitamin sources like uh, brewer's yeast or bee pollen. If it's cheese that you miss because you can't tolerate dairy, I would focus on removing the gut irritating foods from your diet and focusing on trying to boost your progesterone because that's what you need to produce lactase, which helps digest the lactose in the diet or the foods that you're eating, plus thyroid hormone. So it's a met metabolic as well um, in that regard. What is the root cause of depression? Um, this is a really interesting question. It's a good one too. Uh, it's a tough one too, but um, what I've found in working with people with depression is that it usually stems from, at the end of the day and at a very high level, a low metabolism and uh, excessive stress. So this can really just create depression in a person. Um, hypothyroidism as well. It's usually the body not getting what it needs. Um, but that's not to say that there's, you know, emotional, an emotional aspect to this. So have, how have they been treated or how have they lived their life up until this point? What was their childhood like? Did they experience any trauma? These are all really valid things and can also be drivers of depression. So we can't discount that part. I have high level of testosterone, but libido is still very weak. Any advice? Um, so my question would be, how are you living your life during the day? Um, what are you doing? How are you nourishing yourself? Even though your testosterone is good right now, it might not be in the future. And so I would take a good look on, you know, how your, your, what your environment looks like, because oftentimes if we're experiencing stress, whether it's so stress that we don't realize, it will take a toll on our libido because our body's in survival mode. So I would just take a step back and look at how you're living your life, what environment you're creating for yourself. Labs aren't always the perfect indicator of health. Um, this is really where they can this is really where labs fail us. They can look perfect, but the person can be really, really sick. Um, so, you know, good for you in sort of thinking and calling this out um, that it's not normal. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would take a look at how you're eating and what you're doing during the day and trying to identify any stressors that might be the barriers to your libido. So I'm not a live and die by Ray P. I definitely find his work very helpful and inspiring, but I don't agree with everything that he says. So I'm not the person to ask if you want just his advice, um, but that's to say, not to say I don't have any advice for you. So I would actually start by looking at my post, where to start, stop. And that's a really good way to sort of ease into just a more healthy and pro-metabolic way of, way of living um, or habits you can form. Um, and by pro-metabolic, I don't mean like weight loss pro-metabolic, although these can help. It's more like getting your actual metabolism to function properly. Otherwise, I just thought of, you can check out Kate Deering's book, How to Heal Your Metabolism, and um, all of kind of like Ray's principles or Dr. Pete's principles are in there. So that'd be a good place. What causes varicose veins and what can be done to help and repair them? Thank you. Um, so I've been meaning to make a post on this for a long time. I know I've said it a million times, but varicose veins are a clear sign of copper deficiency. So where you can start is my post titled, Where to Start, Stop, um, and also start incorporating copper-rich foods. So I have a post on my top three copper foods, and that's a pretty good place. Do you see any value in taking a turmeric supplement? Um, so I used to take turmeric uh, a long time ago, I short as I don't anymore, it's estrogenic, and um, a lot of them actually have lead and other heavy metals, so they're not quite as um, harmless as people think. So, you know, unless you're getting a super, super, super high quality one, you've checked all those certificates and made sure that there's no heavy metals in them, and you don't have any estrogen overload problems, but let's be real, we all do. Um, then maybe, but um, that's really up to you. So hopefully this information has helped you. What foods and nutrients are needed to correct sunken eyes? Um, sunken eyes are a symptom of probably overall stress, uh, catabolism, so the body has been in a catabolic state. It's been eating itself for a long time. So really taking a good look at what you're eating and how you're living your life, because um, it seems like if you have sunken eyes, you probably have a sallow face. Um, there might be other things going on. It's not just that that's happening. 
and start to make small tweaks from there because you're going to have to work on really getting your body from a catabolic state to an anabolic one and that takes a lot of stress management. Um, what is your opinion on taking an AC for hormone balance liver support? Um, so in my opinion there are much more easy and foundational ways to approach this. Um, you know a supplement is not going to heal heal your liver or heal your hormones. It's just a supplement. So if you're not focusing on the actual problem, things are not gonna get better. Um, they're kinda just gonna stay the same or maybe even get worse. So um, the way you can support your liver and support your hormones is really um, making sure eating a balanced, balanced meals, eating at a frequency that makes sense for you, eating the right kinds of foods, and this takes a little bit of trial and error or potentially working with a practitioner. Daily heart rate 80 post meals, solid daily temps, still waking up 0.5 to 1 degree under ideal. So my question would be, what have you been doing up until this point? How long have you been doing it? What are you eating? Uh, what changes have you made to your lifestyle? Because um, those are very important too. Uh, the morning temperature really shows us the state of the metabolism, the true state. So your morning temp is showing you that it's still low. Uh, compared to the ideal or in context of the ideal, which is 97.8 to 98.6. Um, that's not to say what you're doing is not working. It can also take a lot of time, but I would need to know the other factors that you've been working on to really get an idea. Because if you've been doing this for a long time and it's still low, um, it could just show you that what you're doing is not working. So something has to change. Something has to be tweaked, whether it's what you're eating or your lifestyle. So. I know that's vague, but I'd probably look at other ways you can reduce stress in your life. After starting a metabolic diet, how long does it take to get through healing pound stage? Um, this really depends how long your body has been in dysfunction. Your body is going to take as long as it needs. So just be patient, uh, try to give yourself grace, and hang in there. Should sugar be limited when dealing with dairy intolerance, cutting out dairy for a time? Um, so your dairy intolerance is the result of probably a um, irritated small intestine, lack of progesterone, and lack of thyroid hormone. So it could be one of those things, it could be many of those things. Um, so if it's the first one, um, there could also be some bacterial overgrowth going on, which could also mean that your body might not be able to handle certain carbohydrates at this time. Um, so potentially, um, I don't know, but there could be a connection. I would just need to know more about you. What food is the most imperative to eat organic? Um, so pretty much all produce and grains and legumes and fruits are sprayed with pesticides and herbicides unless you're getting them organic. And even then they do might, they might have some traces of pesticides. Traces of pesticides. Um, that said, you know, grains I would say are probably the worst. Uh, so any kind of grain, if you plan on eating them, um, I, would, I would definitely get them organic. Otherwise though, I do have a list in my earlier posts on the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, the Dirty Dozen are things you definitely want to get uh, organic and the Clean 15 are things you can kind of slide by. So check those out and hopefully that helps. I sometimes get headaches after drinking water. Is it potentially mineral dilution? Um, yeah, potentially. Uh, how much water are you drinking? What kind of water are you drinking? Are there minerals in your water? Are you drinking distilled water? Um, all these things can be factors. You should only be drinking when we're thirsty so, you know, making sure we're doing that and not overdoing it or forcing it. Um, and then making sure we're adding minerals if we're drinking filtered or distilled or any kind of reverse osmosis water, and that should help. Supplementing zinc for COVID prevention. Um, so, if you've been following me for a while, I don't believe in zinc supplementation. It can really imbalance our copper and we need copper for everything to create energy. The immune system needs energy the most. So. Supplementing zinc would throw copper out of balance and not give our immune system the energy it needs to function. Uh, so no, I don't believe in that. Next step after implementing your stops list in regard to histamines, what to focus on next. I would focus on copper rich foods. So check out my post called my top three copper rich foods. Low libido while breastfeeding doomed because it's the body's natural birth control. Uh, in many ways, this is a big yes. Um, the body needs at least it's, it's basically trying, probably trying to protect you from getting pregnant again because it knows that if it doesn't have enough time to recuperate and you know replenish, um, things will be bad for you and the next baby. Um, remember that we need at least two, if not four years 
uh, to properly replenish in between children. Anything less than that is going to create nutrient deficiencies and generational issues. Um, so really, really kind of embrace it. Um, you know, some women do start ovulating too while while breastfeeding, and this can bring the libido back. Um, but you know, it's not. Uh, required or abnormal if you don't so don't beat yourself up if you don't um, I would say as much as it sucks just kind of try to embrace this time um, but also you know try to do romantic things with you and your partner to maybe support it I'm nine months postpartum and nursing my baby is there any detox I can do before I get pregnant again so I would not recommend doing any kind of detox while you're breastfeeding or while you're pregnant um, so that's first and then I'm not sure where you're trying to detoxify from, so that's another question, but remember, as I just spoke about before, that your body needs at least uh, two years in between children. Three years is better, four years is better to really replenish your body and protect against any kind of generational issues um, or malnutrition, because malnutrition is really what drives any kind of, you know, it turns on things um, in terms of epigenetics, and so, I would need to know more information, but these are things to think about. Side effect changes, sweating, stronger body smell, normal, used to not really sweat. Um, yeah, this could be a healing part of your process. Um, many people with hypothyroidism don't sweat because the body just doesn't want to expend want to expend minerals it can't afford it so this could be very well a sign that you're improving and unfortunately sometimes that means things get a little worse or weird before they get better but um, i would say if this continues and you don't feel bad in any way then that's probably a good thing uh you're funny uh no i'm not i'm happily married but thanks for asking